So perhaps the most interesting matchup heading into wildcard weekend is actually going to be this Minnesota Vikings pass rush going up against the Saints tackles because I think this is going to be definitely an elite level matchup on both sides. This should be very fantastic to watch. And first, let's just talk about what the Vikings do well. Of course, when talking about the Vikings pass rush, it really does. It all starts with Daniel Hunter. He is the guy. And like, take a look at this play, for example. He's going to get chipped on this play, which is so pretty interesting because typically when you chip a guy that means that you expect that you're not going to have to worry about him too much because they're just simply going to have a falcon who will run up block him just for a second really just kind of push him into a position where the tackle can take care of him and then he'll run out and run a route but then you have a tackle in good position to block hunter that's the way it's supposed to work and right after the ball is snapped if you notice i mean he's definitely moved over the tight end has to move over to block hunter but he isn't really far out as much as you would like him to be typically you want to kind of block him on what would be Hunter's left shoulder to kind of push him a little bit for towards his right, which would then allow your tackle to get good hand placement. But also Hunter is just so quickly, look at how quickly his first step was to get over to that side of the screen. At this point, that tight end can't really block him on the left side, so he's just going to try to get into his way somewhat, so that way a tackle can at least have some little extra advantage in that regard. But Hunter is so fast, he runs right by him and runs by the tackle as well to get to Ryan for a sack. It was just that speed and also the strength of the little bit of contact didn't affect him at all, which allowed him to easily get over and get a sack. And that's what he is bringing to the table. This guy is a monster. I mean, he's one of the best pass rushers in the NFL right now, no doubt about it. And the fact that he has that speed mixed with his strength makes him such a tough guy to, to take down. Even if you chip him, sometimes it... It still won't work so I always feel like that's really a testament of a great pass rusher there's a lot of good pass rushers who can you know beat a tackle pretty handedly but then once they get chipped well then they have some problems but a great pass rusher is one who can even beat a chip and that's what Hunter can do he definitely is I mean he's maybe top five he's definitely in the conversation for top five I'd probably put him in my top five although I'd have to actually think about it and figure out who's ahead and who's below but he's definitely an elite level edge rusher which definitely brings a lot to this Minnesota Vikings team. I also think that one of the real things that makes this Minnesota Vikings defense good isn't just the fact that they have two good edge rushers, but the fact that they have three good edge rushers. They have three guys who have over seven sacks on the year. Obviously, there's Griffin and there's Hunter. Those are the two big names. But also, the guy in his second season now, Afadi Ndegabo, has really stepped it up and is, has been playing really good football. Also, on a bit of a side note, he actually apparently has watched some of my videos, so shout out to him. Uh, appreciate that. But anyways, let's just talk about what he does well. And one of the things he does really well is something like this. They're going to have a tight end run out to run that route right there. So while there is a tight end in the game on this one, he will not be chipping. He will be running a route. And then it's just going to be a left tackle with a one-on-one -on -one matchup against Indegabo. That's the way it's going to work. And take a look at what happens right when this ball is snapped. So what he likes to do is he likes to stick that arm out like that. He's very big on trying to do, use the punch to just sort of push his assigned man backwards. He's a very He, he once again, sort of like Hunter, has a very unique ability to b both beat you with speed and also beat you with power. And he loves to use that first arm and he'll be the one who initiates contact. Now, you might be saying, well, wait a second, don't you want to get as little contact as possible? Sort of like what we saw with Hunter on that last play where he didn't have much contact and was strong enough to not have that affect him and run over to get the sack. Wouldn't you like that to happen? And in some instances, yes, but sometimes if you can put an arm in a certain situation where you can initiate the contact and basically control the hand placement, then you can kind of get in a position where you can still power through him. The chances of you getting completely through seem pretty slim, but you can still get through if you're strong enough to do it, and he is definitely strong enough to do it. Watch how he is able to push it there and just gets enough that he's able to actually run over and knock the ball out. And this actually was nearly a touchdown. It got ruled a touchdown on the field. Turned out he was actually down by contact. So they gave him the ball, but they didn't get a touchdown out of it, which is a shame because that would have been his second touchdown of the season. But either way, I mean, that's what he can do. And the fact that they have him... Griffin and Hunter who could all just win their one-on-one -on -one matchups consistently I mean that's a huge reason why they've won 10 games this season because they can beat you in several different ways so yeah I mean that's what they're bringing to the table however there is one problem and that problem is who they're going up against Taron Armstead and Ryan Ramsek these two guys are the best tackle combination in the NFL no question you can't even argue anybody else these two guys gave up a combined total of zero sacks in 2019. They didn't give up a single sack all season from tackles. How ridiculous is that, that a team, and granted, 
uh, one of them was banged up for a little bit, but not for much. I mean, they had just under 2,000 snaps between them, no sacks given up by either of them. That's ridiculous, and, and that's a huge reason why the Saints have been so good this season. I, I think that's probably the Saints' best attribute as a team is their tackle play, and so let's just jump into what these guys do well. We'll start off with a Ryan Ramsek play. I love this play. This is uh, an escape act if I've ever seen one. This is a great job of showing it's never too late to come back. So he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and at first, it looks, kind of looks like he's going to get beat a little bit. Watch how the edge rusher fakes it though he's going right at him, but at the last second, it just moves a little bit further down. Really good move, and at this point, Ramsek just isn't where he would exactly want to be. He's a little bit further up than he would like to be. Just in the positioning wise, you know, his assigned man can easily get his feet planted a little bit further down, and then he can try to just put an arm on Ramshek's sort of left side of his body and push off, and he could potentially get around him. I mean, just watch. Ramshek is actually going to just let him do that. He's going to let him get by you. And at this point, you're thinking, okay, what in the world? Why, why would you do this? You know, he's going to get by him. He's going to kill Drew Brees. That'll be the end of Drew Brees' career, and then he'll get a sack, return it for a touchdown. This is just a disaster. But the reason he can do it is because he trusts his strength. Even though right now he just has his left arm on that Colts player, he's easily able to push him back to where Drew Brees would not go because Drew Brees is a veteran and he realizes don't stay too far back, step up in the pocket, don't step backwards. So, you know, that's kind of a little bit of a help too is Drew Brees does help his protection. But either way, I mean, that just kind of shows what Ryan Ramshack can do. You want to try to run around him, go ahead, he'll just push you backwards. So he's kind of actually the perfect tackle for the Saints when you're going up against some of these speedy edge rushers that Minnesota has, is you have a guy who can let you go by him because he's strong enough, he'll push you backwards. Now, granted, I mean, you know, Daniel Hunter is a really strong guy as well, so maybe that could backfire, but so far this season, it hasn't backfired for him. And just to be clear, that's not to say that Ramshek isn't necessarily a, an athletic guy either. The guy is, he's a total athlete. He's just as quick as he is strong. He's, you know, one of the best young tackles in the game right now. He's just, a, he's a monster. And the good thing is they have another monster on the other side, and that's Armstead. He's a guy who, at 304 pounds, ran a 4.71 40-yard dash way back in the day. That was 2013 when he got drafted. So, you're talking about an athlete who is strong. Armstead is an athlete who is strong. I don't know how he ended up going in the third round. That's weird. But anyways, take a look at this play. He's going up one-on-one -on -one against Justin Houston, so no slouch there. And watch how quickly he's just going to get off right when it starts. Watch how quickly he moves over. Houston's plan was to go around, but instantly Armstead just said, yeah, no, that's not happening. He ran over, gets perfect hand placement just like that because of his speed, and there's nothing Houston can do at this point, really. Houston tries to power through, but that just does not happen. It's not until someone actually runs in and uh, hits Armstead from behind where he falls down and Houston gets free. And that's not going to happen most of the time. And also, it helps that, as you saw in that play, Breeze gets the ball out very quickly. So not only do they have probably the best tackle duo in the NFL, but you also have a quarterback who gets rid of the ball in like two seconds. So for the Minnesota Vikings, you have your work cut out for you. I know you guys have done a great job at rushing the passer all year. Well, you're going to have to do better than great to beat the New Orleans Saints. Although I do have to say, there is one more way they have a chance to beat the Saints, and it's outsmarting them. Because that's the other thing Minnesota does. Yes, they have a lot of great guys who can rush the passer, but they also have a very smart defensive mind in Mike Zimmer as their head coach. I mean, he's a guy who can definitely figure out ways to get your guys to have good matchups and sometimes even be able to run straight through free to a passer, and this play is an example of that. So first things first, you will notice that there are five Minnesota Vikings who are on the line right now, and since Detroit only has five offensive linemen blocking, they don't have anyone else like a running back or a tight end blocking on this play. This now means that it's pretty simple. For each lion, they're simply just going to tell themselves, okay, I'm going to keep my eye on one of these Vikings. If he rushes the passer, then I make sure I block him. If he doesn't, I just run over and find somebody to hit pretty simple. And what the Vikings are actually going to do here is they're going to drop one of them back in the coverage, makes sense, and then what they're going to do is they're going to have a twist here, where they're going to have one of their players run like that, another one run there. Basically, the idea is that potentially an offensive lineman could get confused, move in a direction he shouldn't, and then someone else could get free. That's nothing too crazy, it's something you see pretty frequently, but it is something that you'll mainly use as like if that's your one move on the play, but Minnesota, they're having several moves on this play. 
because it actually isn't just five guys they have to worry about, but there's a six. Griffin is right over there, and Griffin is the one who's actually also going to be rushing the passer. So this is still a blitz, but it's just, it's a very unique blitz, and they're doing a lot of different things, trying to confuse the Detroit Lions, and trying to get people to say, well, I don't know exactly what's going on. And it's going to work out. I mean, right after the ball is snapped, as you look, Detroit's left tackle, he is fooled on this play. He is looking up, he notices there's a twist, and so he's saying, oh, I got to make sure I go over there to make sure that in case the twist does work, that I can still be over there to try to make a block. But because of this, now Griffin is completely free, and he has a straight shot to Blau right here. He runs over, makes the tackle, and, I mean, just like that, really, the Lions got incredibly outsmarted there. Granted, it's not that difficult to outsmart the Lions, admittedly. I mean, no one will argue that. I do feel pretty confident that Drew Brees will do a better job of telling his tackles where they should be looking and where they should be looking to block than David Blau did. But at the same time, I think that play goes to show just that they're going to get creative and they're going to try to find ways to rush the passer, even if it's not just in traditional ways. So, yes, it would be huge if Hunter and, you know, all these guys could find ways to rush the passer and get to a quarterback for a sack or just get pressure. That would be very huge. But even if you can't do that, at least if you can scheme some ways to get pressure... That can be huge in this game because when Drew Brees has time, he can absolutely pick you apart. And even with a good, really just a good all-around defense in Minnesota, he will pick them apart if he has time. There's no doubt about it. Drew Brees is just that good. Just personally where I'm sitting right now, I absolutely do think that they stand a chance. I think that they do. I think that the Vikings have a chance to win this game. But that's really what it's going to come down to is can they find a way to get pressure on Brees because Nobody has really been able to do that this season because the tackle play has been good, so good for the Saints. There's a lot of things that do go into it. I've also, I made a video about will Kirk Cousins be able to throw on the Saints defense. I think that's another very interesting thing. So I'll put that as an end card so you can check that one out. But I just think that there's a lot of interesting things going on in this game. It should be a very fun game to watch. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching.